Hey all, this is part two, and we're going to be accessing a property in an object. Now, what we're about to talk about gives people more problems than I ever would have expected. Um, it's just the case that the way the material's been delivered, it just doesn't seem to really get the point across about what the difference between bracket and dot notation is, and why you would use one versus the other. Uh, so we're going to try to go through this a little bit slower, but if you have trouble understanding this, please reach out on Slack or... Uh, leave a comment, actually on Slack probably, I always forget to check the comments on the YouTube videos. Um, just let us know. We, th there's definitely more ways to go about uh, kind of approaching this topic, but for now, I think that what we're about to do should cover it. Um, but keep in mind that if you're having issues with it, a lot of other people do, and it's probably not your fault. Um, so let's consider we've got our object, it's a collection of properties. We can access a value by naming the object and naming the key where that value is located. So let's have a look at an object, three properties. Uh, line seven, we're gonna say value at B underscore bracket to denote that we're using bracket notation to access the value at B. And on line eight, we're gonna use dot notation. And as you'll see, when we have a key like this and we're not using any variables for anything, these operate extraordinarily similarly. So that's pretty much it for that. Now let's talk about a complication that's going to occur in the event that we have spaces in our key which is to say that we have a key that isn't just one word. In this case, it's choice for breakfast. So we're going to do two separate things here. One is going to be uh, a straightforward version of it. The other is going to be what happens when we have a complicated key. Um, to be sure, what happens on line eight through 12 is what gets a lot of people. So line eight, we're gonna establish a variable called key and we're gonna assign it to a string of total. On line nine, we're gonna say value at key is equal to records at key. Now, what we've essentially, <clears throat> excuse me, what we've essentially done here is the exact same thing as this. Lines nine and 10 do the exact same thing. And they also do the exact same thing as records.total. Now, the reason that they all do the same thing is because records.total and records add total are just two versions of the way that we would access the value at total within records. <clears throat> Line 10 gives us an option to use a variable. So we have a variable that stores that string. So essentially lines nine and 10 are the same thing, but line 11 isn't going to work. Now the reason that line 11 isn't going to work is because, uh, sorry, line 10 isn't going to work is because there is no key that is called key. So if we run this, we're gonna see that records add key on line nine works because the value of key is a key within the uh, records object, in this case total. But on line 10, we don't actually have a key in here that is spelled K-E-Y. So we're gonna get undefined. Now, if we were to put a key in there, we're going to see that now when we say records.key, uh, we get this works because we've changed the value inside of records for a key that's actually spelled K-E-Y. Now, in general, when you see your challenges and then the challenges that we're gonna to do together, you're likely going to be dealing with a parameter that's called key. So it's almost never going to be the case that you say object.key in the event that you're solving a function that has a parameter object and a parameter of key. Theoretically, when we call the function, well, we'll see that in a moment when we get to the calling of the function. So on line 15, let's talk about something called uh, the complicated, well, it's not called the complicated key, we call it the complicated key but we're assigning a variable called complicated key to be the actual string here, choice for breakfast. And when on line 16, we access records at complicated key, it's essentially saying records at choice for breakfast, since we assigned a variable to be that value. Now, the problem is, is that if we tried to use dot notation, we're gonna have a look at line 18. See, records.choice space for breakfast, and you can see four is already highlighted because it thinks you mean a for loop. And essentially what's going on there is that if you try to access a key or a key's value, we should say, when the key has spaces inside of it, or even worse, like an exclamation point or something, uh, if it's not wrapped in quotes and we use dot notation, there's no way for the uh, interpreter to know that that's what you mean. So it's gonna think you said records.choice and then started a new statement with four. And when you run that, it's going to stop you right there and be like, hey, this is, unexpected token. There should be no four here. Uh, also, there's no choice, so um, we're, we're running into problems in several avenues. If we comment that out, we'll see that we can access records at choice for breakfast quite simply. 
it's not really that big of a deal provided we use bracket notation. Now a lot of people will say why do you use dot notation? Now this is one of those where I'm going to tell you something that you should take with a grain of salt. In fact you should take a lot of what I say with a grain of salt because for the most part we're mainly showing you the basics and a lot of it can be do it this way until later on when you figure out there are more ways to do it and then choose whatever you want from there. Um, but with that in mind, uh, well, I would say that's probably about enough for now. But anyway, this is, this is what we're going to, uh, a lot of people get stuck on this, and just keep in mind that, oh, oh, that's right, uh, dot notation I think is faster. I feel like I heard that at one point, that if you use dot notation it does things a little bit quicker, something about the way the compiler works, but that might be completely not true. Um, so, again, grain of salt. With all of the food and the metaphors that we're going to be doing this time, that should be a good thing for you. Anyway, let's talk about the coding challenge. We're going to complete a function that takes two parameters, an object and a string key, and returns the value for a property in the object located at the string key. Your function should create a variable and assign it to an expression which accesses the value of the property located at the string key, then return that variable. Below is an example of the code running, assuming that you will have completed the described function, access a property. We're going to grab our function stub, and we're not going to keep putting the function stub below the test cases just because I don't like the way it looks, but again, that was a relatively useful exercise just to, um, here's one thing though, just a small caveat to what we did last time. If we put this here, uh, we're going to have a problem. And the, problem, actually it's problem's not a problem at all, just is undefined. Uh, never mind, let's not worry about that for now. Go back, and that's command Z by the way to go backwards. So, create a result variable, and this is one of those where a lot of people think this is going to be object dot key, because we learned about dot notation and you access a uh, value inside of an object using dot notation sometimes, but this is not one of those times. This is a parameter, and in order to make the function definition work with any new keys that we would pass, we need to say object at key so that it recognizes it as a variable and interprets whatever the value of this that gets passed when we call the function. So this is a parameter, this is the argument that gets bound to the value or sorry, this, and then the, the argument bound, binds itself to the parameter for the duration of the function. So if that seems complicated, um, well, programming can get complicated sometimes. But essentially, parameters, uh, arguments. That's the, the interplay between those. And in order for the parameters to make use of the arguments, we need to say object at key and treat it like a variable as opposed to object dot key, which is going to specifically look for a key that is spelled K-E-Y. So that seems to be enough beating you guys over the head with that. Let's go ahead and run this. Cool, two gigahertz. And let's paste in the input window and run our tests. And that boils our potatoes. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one.